Hello, Nick Stone. I am a huge fan of you. This is like, um, I love everything that you've written, and you're no stranger to the whole Marvel Universe. You've written for uh, Shuri, the wonderful book, and so now with this podcast, you're diving into 60 years of T'Challa. What was it about the Black Panther and his entire legacy that you really wanted to dive into? And you know, the Black Panther was the first ever Black comic book superhero, and that's a really powerful thing. Um, I knew that he was created in the 1960s, and I also knew that in the 1960s there were no Black people creating comic book characters. So I was just really curious about not only how he came to be, but how he has evolved over time as he has gone from being written by um, white men specifically to being written by people who look a lot more like him. Right. Were there any misconceptions that you had at first that you learned about later on as you dived into this? You know, yes. I So initially, and I guess it's just because I have known the Black Panther as the Black Panther ever since I learned who the Black Panther is, I didn't actually realize that initially there was a bit of nervousness about the Black Panther having a name that matched the political party, which also came to be around like the same year, I think, like it's like the same, around the same time the Black Panther Party comes into existence and you have this character who has the same name. And I don't know, I guess because his name is still Black Panther, he's still referred to as a Black Panther, it didn't occur to me that Marvel would have taken issue or like been nervous about the association until I learned that they changed his name for a minute. Um, and that was a really fun fact to learn. And I am thrilled that they decided to change it back. Yes, yes, indeed for that. One of the things that I was I really loved about this, you know, you're interviewing writers and creators of Black Panther T'Challa, and they all have their own voice and their own kind of meaning of what Black Panther means to them. But yet at the same time, it all flows. Yeah. And you as a writer, can you talk about during the interview process, how was they able to get everything to connect and flow together? You know, I think it's just creators having respect for the creators who came before them. Um, the beauty of comics is that you have these characters who pass through a variety of hands over time. And because Don McGregor was respectful of what like Jack Kirby was doing before him and then Chris Priest was respectful of what Don McGregor had done. Hudlin was respectful of Chris Priest and Don McGregor. So, like, you just have this kind of cumulative effort to make this character as powerful, but also as human as he can possibly be. Um, and, yeah, as a fellow creative, the beauty of Black Panther to me is the fact that his creation was so collaborative and that over time... The, the T'Challa that we know and love today came from a bunch of different brains. All of the characters that we were introduced to in the 2018 film, they were created by different people. Like Killmonger was the creation of Don McGregor. Shuri was the creation of Reginald Hudlin. The Dormelage were the creation of Christopher Priest. Like you have all of these different people contributing to this lore that we are super into now. And I just love that so much. Right. A lot of people today are introduced to Black Panther because of the movie. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel that, you know, when we have the movies going to introduce us to all the comics and the history and the lore, do you feel that kind of making him more of this pop culture icon for the Avengers and for the spinoffs, we kind of lose the essence of what Black Panther originally stood for? Not at all. You know, I say it's you a superhero who can do both, right? Like who can stand the comic test of time and who is a symbol who stands for something and he is a symbol that remains exactly what he is no matter whose hands are, are creating him and also it's awesome that he is such an icon in pop culture because why shouldn't he be you know we think of spider-man your friendly neighborhood spider-man he is both a pop culture icon 
and a symbol of safe neighborhoods, you know, like uh, somebody watching over a neighborhood. Same thing with um, Iron Man. We, we see him in these different lights as well. So I'm actually thrilled that he gets to embody both of these worlds and that who he is has kind of remained steady um, since his inception. Like at his core, he's pretty much the same really dope dude. Yes. Now, with your podcast, it's six episodes, wonderful episodes, by the way. Was there information that, you know, from right when you got this breakdown and you knew all the information, was there something immediately that you wanted to tackle that you always wondered about? Yeah, honestly. So I had the privilege of kind of shaping the show. Um, so I wrote the original outline for it. And for me, it was really about how he became who he is, right? Like over the course of time. Um, as you read through Black Panther comics, starting back with Fantastic Four in 1966, and you read through, even now, John Ridley is writing the current Black Panther run. And it's amazing. As you go through all of these, you see T'Challa become more and more of, like, a person and less of just this symbol or this kind of lofty ideal. Um, and I really wanted to understand how that happened over time, especially considering the parallels with history, with American history. And and I think we did absolutely get down into the weeds with that. And I'm, I'm glad. So the first two episodes, you know, is going to drop on the, on the 14th of February. Very excited for that. Our love for Black Panther spills into Valentine's Day. Uh, so... Well, talking about the first two episodes, can you just talk a little bit roughly about what was it that you wanted to dive into and kind of what those two episodes are about in the meeting to you? Yeah, so the first episode is just kind of like origin of the Black Panther as a character. And the second episode, we start digging into um, his, the, the solo comic runs. So the first solo comic run was written by Don McGregor, and that's kind of what we're diving into in the second episode. So we're learning about his inception, we're learning about kind of whose idea he was, how things changed about him, um, even just in the earliest years, we learn about like half mask versus full mask, how they decided he would be drawn. Like there's so many details that go into the creation of a comic, period. So the detail that has to go into creating a character in a world are like pretty next level. Um, and it was a lot of fun hearing a little bit about what was going on in the Marvel offices in 1966. How did it connect to what was going on outside the Marvel offices in 1966? Because obviously 1966, we're in the thick of the civil rights movement, right? So learning these different pieces and getting this connective tissue just really helped me, even as like an already fan, get a better grip on not only how all of this works with regard to creating a cultural icon, but also the power of people deciding to work together on something. So you will get all of that even just in the first two episodes. Wow. Um, one of the things that I was wondering as well, you know, you started you saying with 1966 and the whole about Black Panther movement, civil rights as well. And then we get to kind of today and, and what he's meant for today. How do you, wondering, T'Challa never loses his voice, despite everything that's happened and all of the different changes. What makes T'Challa T'Challa? Oh, that's a really good question. Honestly, I feel like that's something that's still being answered. Um, as long as people are continuing to write stories about T'Challa, T'Challa will continue to evolve. He is definitely, um, for me, he's a symbol of like what it means to be a person especially a person who has to take on a lot of responsibility. And I love watching him go from just being a feature in Fantastic Four and being a member of the Avengers to now like having an intergalactic empire and literally being like a space emperor, you know? See, seeing that T'Challa could go from being this kind of sidekickish character to now like basically running the universe and running the Avengers like that's that's a huge deal and I feel very empowered I actually feel very empowered by T'Challa's journey wow now this is six episodes was there something that you wish you could have included that you didn't really get a chance to talk about oh that's a really good question
question. Um, no, not really. We had a really solid, like, chunk of interviews. I do, I wouldn't mind getting to do, like, a couple of bonus episodes where we get into just, like, minutia of stuff. Um, get into some of the pop culture references, for instance. Like, Reginald Hudlin's run is just, I absolutely love it. And part of the reason I love it is because it's very hip-hop. It's very, like, early 2000s hip-hop. And, like, I absolutely love that about it. And getting to kind of dig into what what references are there would be really fun. For going down for the six episodes, I was wondering, can you talk about the kind of the middle part? Because we, we know what the first two is about. We don't know what the, the, the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth and sixth. Yeah, the four. Yeah, I mean, they're all about evolution, right? So, as I mentioned, the first episode really follows... Um, his inception. The second episode is about his first solo run. And then the third, fourth, and fifth and sixth episodes follow that same tra- trajectory. Like we have, he has a number of solo comic runs. And we also had the opportunity to do a really exciting discussion, is all I will say here, so that I am not <laughs> spoiling things. But each of these episodes really does bring something new. Um, to the listener's knowledge of the Black Panther and where he came from, and also a little bit of like where he might be going. Oh, can you kind of tease what you would think the future of Black Panther would be? You know, I don't actually know. Uh, Right now, I'm really enjoying reading where T'Challa is at now under John Ridley's just amazing hands, right? So John Ridley is the current writer for Black Panther and the previous writer was ta Coates and this is actually the first time that like he's had kind of back-to-back runs without years in between them so I honestly since he has become such an icon I'm excited to see where he does wind up going I mean he's already left the planet so Perhaps he winds up in a parallel universe and meets some other version of himself. I hope everyone watched Marvel's What If, by the way. (laughs) Fantastic. Okay. So I I do think that this, not even the sky, is the limit for our Panther hero. As a writer, how did this series inspire you? And uh, because I know you wrote Shuri as well. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I have had the privilege of writing um, a number of prose novels for, for Marvel and just talking to people who were writing Black Panther and drawing Black Panther during a time when it wasn't exactly, oof, I don't even know what word to use, but like it wasn't there were a lot of things being tackled in the comics that weren't popular on a large scale. And it was stuff people didn't really want to be talking about. Right. Um, there's a lot of controversy that the Black Panther covers. There's a there's a storyline where he's taking on apartheid. There's a storyline where he takes on the Klan. You know, seeing that those stories existed when they did, honestly, it just made me more willing to take bigger risks in my own storytelling because if John McGregor can have Black Panther fighting the Klan in the 1970s, I believe, I can do some, I can do some stuff now in in the the 2020s when things are a little bit different. Right. And you did that a little bit with Dear Martin. That was incredible. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Dear Martin was, I cannot wait for that book to fall out of relevance. Understood. Yeah. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Of course. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having it's me. It's a pleasure. No, no matter.